Oh, bless the Lord. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. He woke us up this morning. He gave us rest last night. And we have so much to praise him for. Amen. The Bible is clear that everything, everything, I mean everything that is alive, praise the Lord. It is a pleasure to be here this morning. I'm so excited. I tell you, it only prayer could get me up so early after traveling all day yesterday. <laughs> but there's something about prayer, amen, that, that we just can't resist. And I just want to thank God for all of you who have come this morning as we continue with our wonderful camp meeting. Thanks to our leaders uh, for uh, uh, putting all of this together, but even more so to our God for his grace and his mercy. Amen. I'm delighted, just simply delighted to be here with you as we celebrate Camp Meeting 2018. I invite you to bow your heads with me. We pause just to look to you, our Father who dwells in heaven. I recognize, God, that I am not able, I have not the ability to accomplish the task that is before me, but I trust in the power of your Son, Jesus. So I pray now that you will speak through me to us. That your word will go forth, O oh Master, with power and with conviction, and yea, with authority, resting upon the hearts of your people, transforming us, so that your name would be glorified in this place, and yea, the power of the enemy would be broken. Exalt your son in this place. Let Jesus be lifted up, Father, for he has declared, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. And we want to be drawn today, O oh God. So lift up Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Have you ever wondered why life is so difficult? Why life seems to be a series of struggles? As soon as you are finished with one struggle, there is another. Why, in spite of all our cultural and technological advances, the signing of peace agreement, that the world still can't achieve peace. Why is it that even in the church, the place where there is supposed to be peace, that there is often so much conflict among God's people? Mm, why? I don't know if you've ever wondered why the divorce rate within our church is so high. I don't know, but just in case you've wondered, just in case, you see, the simple reality is there are cosmic forces at work in our world whose ultimate goal is to separate mankind from his creator and bring destruction forever. Have you ever wondered why indeed that so many people, instead of becoming a part of the church, seem to be leaving the church? Ah, just in case you may have wondered, let me say that there is a powerful demonic army led by the prince of darkness whose prime objective is to use whatever and whomever he can to undermine the faith of God's people and to stop them from carrying out the mission of God's kingdom and to prevent unbelievers from hearing and responding to the gospel's call and yes to ultimately vanquish humanity to eternal hell yes there is a devil the Bible is clear that we are in a war, a war with unseen spiritual enemies. We hear Ephesians chapter 6, 12 declares, for we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, uh, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There is a belief, it seems today, not only in the world, but it seems as if this belief is found among members of the church. Mm. There is a tendency to depersonalize the existence of Satan. Mm -hmm. You see, the conception of evil spirits given us, uh, uh, given us in the Bible is treated as an obsolete uh, superstition. And the name of Satan now serves for various television shows, mm -hmm, movies and sports teams. And uh, as a careless jest, we talk about this being as though it is some figment of our imagination. There are many who deny his very existence and profess to ex explain uh, all these things that are happening by just uh, uh, physical causes. Uh, but the Bible is clear that Satan is not a figure of speech uh, nor a figment of the imagination, but a living, active being whose presence and influence is seen everywhere in our world today. Scripture identifies him as a prince of this world who marshals an army of a mighty rank of principalities and powers within the spirit world, mm -hmm. uh, whose domain is the darkness of this world and high places in which they exercise imperial sway, whose appetite for evil only exceeds their capacity for producing it, whose empire is ruled with a settled policy and its warfare is carried out with a system of strategy. Yes! He he takes advantage of every opportunity for attack against the church of God. His intention is to persistently and consistently work against the kingdom of God. The Bible said in John chapter 5, 19, that the whole world lies in the power of this evil one. He lays a snare for the people of God and persistently attempts to lead God's church astray from the sincere sincere and pure devotion to God. We see the effect even now in our churches. The Bible tells us in John 10, uh, in 10, he comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. First Peter 5, 8, your enemy, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion looking for someone uh, to devour. You see, the Bible calls him a lion because he's fierce. Calls him a serpent because he's crafty. The Bible calls him a dragon because he's powerful. We cannot for one moment rest uh, uh, content uh, believing that there is not an enemy who's trying to destroy God's people. You see, as a church, we have sometimes become so settled in our ways of doing ministry that we forget that we are fighting against an enemy that doesn't like us. Uh, we oftentimes believe that our problems is against one another but the Bible is clear we wrestle not against flesh and blood people are not the problem there is an enemy it is against this relentless cosmic force of darkness that we are called or we are told that we wrestle against we need to understand this morning that in our, our own humanity, human defenses are no match for this uh, 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 enemy. Are you listening to me? It's not a flesh and blood battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Listen to me this morning. We are in a war just in case you've forgotten. There's a war that is raging for the soul of mankind. We wrestle not. The word wrestle is a term that we are acquainted with. It is a word that is used in sports, amen? 
Wrestling, therefore, is a, 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 not a, a, a battle where you stand at a distance, am I correct? And shoot off missiles, am I, am I right? When you wrestle, you, you, you make a close contact. It's a hand-to-hand -hand, uh, uh, war, right? It's foot-to-foot -foot struggle, amen? Uh, 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 it's an up-close and personal battle. So recognizing that human effort is not strong enough to wrestle hand-to-hand -hand and foot-to-foot -foot against this vicious, relentless foe, the text emphasizes that we must be strong in the Lord. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah this morning. In other words, uh, our victory against uh, this relentless enemy is uh, through Jesus Christ. We ought to be excited this morning because we recognize uh, that no matter how powerful the enemy may be, we serve a God who is mightier and powerful. There is a Jesus who is a demon tamer. Hallelujah. We wrestle not. <laughs> Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 32 that when Esau and his army rose up against Jacob to take his life and the life of his family, the Bible said Jacob wrestled with God in an irresistible prayer in order to win the battle against the enemy. You see, the text in Ephesians did not tell us that we ought to wrestle. It's a fight. It said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. But he goes on to say, be strong in the Lord. Amen. You see, in, in, in the story of Jacob, we notice that in order for Jacob to save his life and the life of his family, he was not or he did not go fighting with the enemy. He did not go fighting with Esau. Instead, ah, instead the Bible said Jacob wrestled with God in prayer. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. And so I want to just say, I want to just say, uh, though we wrestle against uh, uh, principalities and powers, the only way that we can stand victorious against the enemy is to wrestle with God. Hmm? We must get up close and personal with God. Are you listening to me today? When Jacob faced the enemy who was coming to destroy him, it was not the enemy that Jacob went after. In other words, Jacob went to God and he wrestled with God. And the Bible said he would not let God go until God blessed him. And it is in holding on to God. It was in wrestling with God that that Jacob was victorious against the devil, against the enemy, against Esau, his brother. Are you listening to me? Yea, though we wrestle not against flesh and blood, though we wrestle against principalities and power. I just want you to know today, the only way we can be victorious in this battle is to wrestle with God. <laughs> We are no match for the enemy. But Jesus has conquered him. The saddest sign, however, of many Christians is the utter absence of consistent personal prayer in their Christianity. Too many of us are going through the motions of attending church, but never praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication. Too many Christians have become lazy in spiritual matters. There are too many Christians in the church who are not praying Christians. As a matter of fact, you are not a Christian if you are not a praying. 
There is a materialistic attitude of indifference in God's church to prayer. Our prayer meetings are empty. But our praise and worship sessions are packed. There are too many of us as Christians who crave in earthly, temporal pleasures instead of the rigors of consistent and persistent praying. We seek to live a life of ease, invest in time and resources in things of no eternal value, while the things that matter most are put on the back burner of life. Too many of us as Christians, the world has become an, e a, an easy place to live in. You didn't hear me. For too many of us who profess to know Jesus and looking forward to meeting Jesus, understanding that we ought to evangelize our world instead of evangelizing the world, trying to get folks out of the world into the relationship with Jesus. We have found the world a very easy place to live in. And so it is easy to forget uh, that there is a spiritual war going on, that there is a devil that we must consistently contend against uh, in prayer and through prayer. It's easy to forget. If we are not praying consistently and persistently, it's easy to forget that millions of souls in the world are under the control of Satan. We need to understand that it is the duty of the church to bring the gospel to a lost world. But the church is filled with prayerless Christians who are sluggish and spiritually stagnant. You know something? The devil is not bothered by church members who are enjoying church fellowship while remaining indifferent to the battle that is raging for the souls of men. The devil is not afraid when Christians are confined in their sanctified environment called church instead of fighting on the battlefield. The devil is not bothered by folks who simply attend church and believe that they are okay when they have no time for God nor prayer. He's not bothered by that. As a matter of fact, he likes it when you go to church as long as you are not praying. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, it is the desire of God that prayer be the, 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 the tool that brings down the power of the enemy in the lives of those around us. Are you listening to me? The church, however, is being led. Mm. By leaders and members who have no time for prayer. And so the thing that we need the most is the one that is neglected the most. Carnal Christians leading. Ouch. But I just want to say to somebody today that there is still power in prayer. The devil is no match for even the weakest saint upon his or her knees. There is power in prayer. I've proven it, I've seen it, and I've experienced it, that when you pray, God moves. <laughs> but it may seem sometimes like a rather difficult task 
to consistently stand and, and pray. And you know you're praying and you're not seeing things happen. As a matter of fact, I've discovered that the more I pray about something, the worse that thing seem to be, become. The more I pray for someone to be saved, the more evil the person may seem to become sometimes. But I learn that as long as I persist on my knees, that God is working behind the scenes. And though I I may not see how God is leading. I know that he's working. So it may seem sometimes that God is not answering, that God is not acting, that God is not moving. But when it seems like God is not moving, all you got to do is look at Calvary and you will know that God has to move. Oftentimes the reason we let go and we give up and we surrender our prayer life. It's because we are too focused on what the devil is doing. We are focused on the enemy. Are you hearing me today? But in the text, the text, the text, of, we never know, we notice, we notice, never once were we told to focus on the enemy in order to stand victorious against him. While we wrestle against principalities and powers, mm -hmm, we must wrestle with God. Yeah, the Bible said, be strong in the, and in the, come on, be strong in who? And in whose mighty power? Put on the whole armor of who? Oh, mercy, 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 mercy. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm simply saying today uh, that while the text tells us uh, that we have an enemy that is powerful, uh, that we are wrestling against, uh, it also makes it clear that our focus should not be on the enemy, but on God in whom there is a victory. Hallelujah. You see, too many times <laughs> we try to fight the devil by focusing on the devil. Mm. The Bible is clear that the way to fight against the darkness of this world is not to focus on the darkness, but to focus on the light, Jesus Christ. Be strong in the Lord and in the might of his power. Put on the old armor of God. In other words, yeah, you are wrestling. You, you are in a, 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 a war. You are fighting against an enemy, but your focus should not be on the enemy. Your focus should rest on the one with power to give you the victory. Hallelujah, somebody. You see, you see, you see, you see. Listen, 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 listen. How do you get rid of darkness when you walk into a dark room? How do you get rid of the darkness? What do you do? You turn on the light. You do not walk into a dark room and look at the darkness. You do not study the darkness and then speak to the darkness. Darkness, be gone. Darkness, I rebuke you. Hey! When you enter a room that is dark, you turn on the light. May I suggest that it's the same thing in the supernatural natural world uh, to get rid of the darkness of evil we gotta turn on the light who is the light uh, I hear Jesus declared in John 8 12 I am the light of the world hallelujah somebody <laughs> I hear him say John 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Hey, somebody, let me tell, let me tell you quickly. You see, the word comprehended is a compound of two Greek words, uh, uh, which means uh, to seize or to pull down or to attack or to conquer or to hold under one's power. Hey, so let me read the verse again. John chapter uh, uh, 1 verse 5. Darkness does not have the ability to suppress or to hold under its domain the power of light. Are you listening to me? Ah, light came into the world and darkness comprehended it not. Light came into the world and darkness could not conquer it. Light came into the world and darkness could not hold it under. Light came into the world. 
<laughs> and the power of darkness had no power over the power of light. You see, light always conquers darkness. Light will always prevail against darkness. So let me say this again as I take my seat. Let me say this one more time. Yea, though we wrestle, though we wrestle against principalities and power, we ought not to let our attention stay focused on the enemy that we are wrestling against. We ought to allow our attention to be focused on the God that we must wrestle with for power to overcome the enemy. Are you hearing me? The Bible said in Psalm 2 verse 8, ask of me and I will give thee the heathen for thy inheritance and the utmost part of the earth for thy possession. I hear Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer and tell you a great and unsearchable things that you do not know. I hear Mark saying in chapter 11, 24, therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. In other words, let your focus be upon Jesus. Let your Focus be upon the one who has conquered the enemy and has power to give you power to be victorious. Stay focused on Jesus. And even when times you're praying and you don't seem to be receiving answers to your prayer, stay focused on Jesus. Keep on praying. For the more you pray, the powers of hell will run from you. We wrestle not against each other. Stop allowing people to be your problem. We have too, too much malice in the church. Unforgiving spirit. Because we're focusing on what people did or, 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 or what so-and-so said. Are you listening to me? And the problem that our prayers are not being answered or the reason we've become so lazy in prayer is because we have slipped up bad by allowing people to become our, prayer, our problem. And so instead of wrestling against the enemy, we're wrestling against people. People are not your problem. There is a devil. That is real. And yeah, he uses people. But I know a God <laughs> who is powerful and he uses people. Just ordinary people like us. Just ordinary people. And if we're persistent in prayer, regardless of what church members have done to us, hallelujah, somebody. And if we persist and we pray, pray for each other and pray for the souls that are lost and pray for our young people and pray for those who are leaving the church and pray for those who need to come. If we only persist and we will be able to stand victorious against the powers of darkness. God bless you.